Well, hello and welcome to my weekly video blog. Uh, as you can see, I've left the uh, comfortable surroundings of my office and I've now moved into the fitness suite in the sports hall. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because that's gonna, really gonna be the uh, theme of our uh, video blog this week. I've got a couple of guests, which I'm gonna introduce you to shortly. Um, but I just wanna go back to something that I said last week. I threw out a bit of a challenge. I said, if you work at another school and you think you've got a better uh, extracurricular program than we have, do let me know. No one's been in touch yet, so maybe that tells me something. So our, our complete ECA list is out this week, and there are 102 extracurricular activities on that list, which I think is fantastic. In addition to that, uh, period eight on Sunday, we have an enrichment lesson for all our secondary students. There are another 22 activities in there, non-sporting activities to make sure those activities get a chance. So things like debating in Arabic, uh, the WEC newspaper, uh, the yearbook, year 11 prom, there are some committees, including prefects. So that's another 22 on top of those 102. Uh, we've got an activity program after school for FS2, uh, for the first time, a really comprehensive program there as well. So we really have got over 130 activities going on every week at WEC. And why do we do that? Well, first of all, it's because it's part of our philosophy. And our philosophy is that you start learning from the moment you come through the door and you don't stop learning until you leave. So the learning takes place not just in the classroom, the second thing is that all our staff understand that just being a really good teacher isn't enough here uh, and that you have to be committed to these other activities. And the final reason we have all these activities is we can. Uh, you won't hear me going on and on about our facilities. Um, the reason that we're able to offer all these activities is because we have such a great campus and that's why the facilities are important. They're not here just as a, a sort of showpiece for new parents. We're going to use them all. Okay, so uh, I still think we're going to have the most extensive program. I'll keep that challenge in there. If you're a principal in another school looking at this, do get in touch if you think you can do better. Don't think you can. Okay, so let me introduce our two guests today. Uh, so my first guest is, uh, if you know, Joanne Harty, who I mentioned last week, who's our nominee for the Marianne Mavaki Award. Uh, I promise not to ask her about that, so I won't. Uh, and on my left, who I'll talk to you in a minute, Terry, uh, who runs um, Dubai City Football Club, which is a new partner for us, and we're gonna talk to him about that in a minute. So let's just focus a little bit on sport, yeah. Joanne. So you've got some new members of your department. You've got a bigger department this year. Tell us a little bit about that. So we have a team of 10 this year in PE. We've um, added three additional staff uh, members to our PE team. First of all, we've got Barry Lomas. He is a specialist in tennis, swimming, football, and basketball. And um, we've also got Tom Moriarty. He is our rugby specialist. And then we've got Gabby Hounsell, who is our swim specialist. So we're extending the department by three and we're hoping to um, build on the sport we can already offer in with those extra specialisms in the department. Okay, and the other thing we've done this year, we changed the makeup of the secondary school day. We have a longer lunch time, and that's created a great opportunity for you to add more sport into the curriculum or to, into the non-curriculum time. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it certainly has. We've, um, this, this year, our lunchtime provision has, has really upped, and it's been the first year we've been able to offer extracurricular opportunities at lunchtime. So parents, you might see these around school, you'll see them in the parent cafe. Um, these are the lunchtime provision we've got um, in place at the minute for our sporting clubs. So we've got our primary lunchtime clubs and our secondary lunchtime clubs. Um, each of our squads this year is gonna have the opportunity to train twice, because we're really wanting to raise the standards um, of our, and quality of our provision for our squads. So they're gonna have one lunchtime training and one after school training. Um, to add to that, we're obviously offering a lot of recreational opportunity for our students. So that means that if our students' um, body do not get into one of our sporting squad teams, they can still come and participate at lunchtime. Um, our lunchtime clubs range from dodgeball, to table tennis, to tennis outside, to fitness. And um, we've also got the support of ESM um, during those lunchtime clubs, and they're gonna be bringing in specialist coaches to provide them for us. Fantastic, and so I, I like that message. This isn't just about elite sport. Nope, we want we want to have elite sportsmen, but actually we want participation. Yeah. Um, and I think perhaps you might have a message for the parents of the, the students who are in squads. It's a, it's a privilege to get to the squad. Well done if you've been selected for a squad. But I think there's just maybe one message that you'd like to send to parents about students who are in squads and the students themselves. Yeah, this, this week um, has been our squad tryout week. So in term one for our competitive sports squads, we participate in football, primary and secondary, both girls and boys. Um, swimming, primary and secondary, both girls and boys, and senior basketball. So first of all, I'd just like to say a huge congratulations and well done to all the students who came and tried out for all of those competitive squads. Um, this year, we've seen the most students 
ever a tryout for those squads, particularly swimming. So the comp it has been extremely competitive for those limited number of places. Um, students will have found out today whether they've been successful in gaining a place on our competitive squad. Um, and then moving forward, um, students must sign and parents must sign a player contract. You will receive a letter with a link to that player contract. Um, and what I would ask is that you go through that really thoroughly with your, uh, with your child and then read through it and sign it. Once it's been signed, the student will then get their um, kit to be part of that squad. Now, this year, um, we have made some changes to that squad contract, particularly for parents with regards to pickup times. And um, one thing I would ask that if your child is part of a squad, that you are there, you know, ready to pick them up when the match is over or when the training is finished. Um, and also the commitment from the child to make sure that they are attending every single one of our training sessions. I mentioned briefly that we are wanting to raise the standard of our squads and we've put more sessions on for each squad. So each squad is training uh, twice a week, swimming sometimes three times a week. But what we need from you is that you make sure that your child is fully committed to that squad and able to attend every training session. Brilliant. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. And you remember last week I talked about our student and our parent expectations. Well, this all ties in with that. Uh, so thanks to Joanne. You wouldn't know she was nervous, would you? I don't know what to, I know what to say, she said. I think we've got past that. OK, so let me move on to Terry. I'm very happy to, uh, to be talking to Terry today. One of the things that, that Joanne and I have talked about a lot is trying to find partners who share our ambition and our philosophy. So our philosophy is sport for all, but our ambition is that we want to be able to compete at the highest level uh, throughout Dubai and with the more established schools uh, and speaking to Terry last year with Joanne we were really happy um, that he shares that philosophy so tell us a little about Dubai City Football Club which sure. I think many of our parents won't really have heard of sure uh, so first and foremost it's our privilege to be here um, our partnership with uh, the school is more than just uh, running academy programs in the evenings uh, we're very much integrated with uh, Joanne and her amazing PE team mm -hmm. uh, we've spent the last week uh, facilitating the school squad trials and also supporting curriculum time. So it's been, it's been a fantastic opportunity to, to really live and breathe the culture of the school. Um, and me and the guys, you know, we, we've come away learning quite a lot, not just from the, 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 the teams, the, the staff of PE uh, teachers, but also the student base. Uh, there's a, an incredible demographic at the school. So the cultures that we're working with, uh, it's quite inspiring to be honest and it, it's only going to encourage us to, to hopefully execute uh, some fantastic programming at the school. Uh, okay, so parents sign their children up to DCSC, tell, yeah. tell us what they're going to get okay, and what's so, going to make uh, it such a great provision. We, we offer a, a three-tier development pyramid, so we start from absolute foundations, the grassroots, it's called Fundamental Football. Uh, and that entry point is for a, a three-year-old to six-year-old, which is, you know, basic skills, improving listening skills, imp uh, improving motor skills. Um, some small-sided games programming, basically a, a soft introduction, uh, fun being the focus on, the, on that particular curriculum. Um, the next step to the program would be the development squad piece. Um, so that's where we will really want to channel and, and I think create cohesion between mm -hmm. Joanne's school squad program and not just for the so-called elite. Um, there definitely is a, is a place uh, for the kids who maybe don't make the squads. And I think there's, there's, there's got to be a focus for those students to to really invest a bit more time on their game and, uh, and spend time with me and my staff out on the pitch. But that's where the relationship uh, is, is absolutely imperative, that it's, it's seamless. Um, so far, we're, we're, we're working well together. We're challenging each other, which I think is, is a good representation of the culture and the environment that we're yeah. really trying to develop. You'll, you'll always get challenged by Joe. No, no, don't it's, worry about it's that. It's welcomed and it's, it's a two-way street uh, in terms of the, re the relationship. But at the end of the day, our, our objectives are very much aligned. Okay, um, can you tell us a little bit about your coaches uh, and yes, their, their absolutely. qualifications? Yeah, absolutely. So I stand very proud. Um, I've been here 12 years, so I've, I've been around the block quite a bit. Uh, I've, I've inherited many teams in, in, in my time here in Dubai. Um, I can wholeheartedly say that this team are a serious, strong, focused group of guys uh, with a shared growth mindset. Um, as ambitious as the students, which I think is healthy, uh, nobody wants to rest on laurels here. Um, everybody's coming in with a, a UEFA A or B license uh, accreditation, um, which is, comes few and far between in this region. And not only that, but a, a degree in further education. It might be sports science, uh, youth sport and coaching, uh, some in teaching. So there's a, a fantastic array of different contributions away from just being sports coaches. Yeah. Um, and I hope that that can really drive and, and, and help create 
your your objective to create that yeah. elite environment. Yeah. But yeah. we're very patient. We understand that it's a building block process, and uh, you know we're very much on board and very excited about the challenge. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, well there you go. There's a little bit about the ECAs, a little bit about sport, um, and as Terry said, you know we're not going to be the best school at football in six months' time because of this, um, but we're going to be one of the best schools in football within the next 12, 18, 24 months. You know, it's all part of the planning and the journey. So I, ho I hope you like what you've heard today. Uh, I've been impressed by it. We, we don't go on about uh, sport and ECAs as one of our unique selling points because actually it's what sports and ECAs can deliver in terms of student development. It's all linked to the whole uh, program the whole way we approach education in the school. Okay, just before I finish, I promised last week that I would tell you who is the staff star of the week every week. Uh, um, Matthew Morris was nominated this week for his fantastic work in helping the new staff to settle in and their induction program. But our staff star of the week this week is Saqib Akram, our head of business studies and economics. He's done an amazing job in his department. The way that he has set up his department, his displays are absolutely fantastic. And he's also been brilliant in helping out another gym school with their business studies department with schemes of work and resources. So well done to Saqib. And just want to finish by mentioning, I hadn't planned this, but I went to secondary assembly this morning and our new secondary principal, Mr. Doug Pettit, was talking about courage and risk taking. Uh, and he didn't, it wasn't just theoretical. At the end, he allowed the students to choose an activity for him to do in 12 months time. Three things that he really didn't want to do. So one was sing in public, solo. Uh, the other one was to play a piano recital. And the third one was to jump out of an airplane. He asked the children themselves what they wanted him to do. So in 12 months, 12 months, 12 weeks time, Mr. Pettit will be on stage in secondary assembly singing a solo to the entire secondary school, which I think is awesome. Can't wait for it. So thanks again, as usual, for watching this video blog. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and as ever, have a great weekend with your families. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.